Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is incredible. You know what? There's been a lot of kind of talk about what the future of BHB is, but the truth is the future is pretty darn bright. We have a bunch of animals that are coming up. So when I talk about like, oh, I might even kind of downsize a little bit and stuff like that, it doesn't mean that I'm still not gonna be working with new projects and new animals and stuff like that. We're just gonna continue to streamline, right? Look at this beautiful high white, black and white albino California king snake. Absolutely wonderful that we're raising up. This was a baby from earlier this year and who doggy, I tell you what, it is incredible. So. Again, you know, even if I streamline a few areas, doesn't mean I'm not gonna continue to be getting new snakes because I love that stuff and there's a lot of really crazy projects. So today, I'm gonna take you on colubrids, pythons, all kinds of other stuff. What's gonna be happening for the future of BHB like that little monkey right there. Trust me, we have a ton of really beautiful things coming up. I love the black and white cow kings. And of course, that last one was an albino high white black and white cow king. This one here, oh, look at that little monkey right there. Just grab me like that, ooh, tell you what. What's going on? He thinks I'm food. This is actually a black and white striped California king snake, and it is a feisty little monkey right there. It just, I, I think it really thinks it's gonna be able to eat me. Buddy, I, you know, I do feed it pinkies, but not pinkies like in fingers, you know what I mean? Come on, buddy, you gotta let go. Come on. I tell you what, these things can be cheeky. And talk about an insane animal right here. This, of course, is an amber scaleless corn snake, which is a hypo, it's a caramel, it's a scaleless, but then it has this crazy stripe down its back that makes it so cool. So we produced this one, we're like, we gotta hang on to this because it is absolutely a ripper. We've got a bunch of really cool scaleless stuff that's gonna be coming up too. I mean, I love the scaleless corn snakes. Just like this albino diffuse scaleless corn snake, again, unbelievable here. It's an albino, it's a blood red or what they would call diffuse, and it's a scaleless. Sometimes they'll call these fire corn snakes too. So these are incredible. And just as it gets bigger, it's gonna get more and more orange, more and more red, gonna be a great future breeder. And I have always been a corn snake guy, and these are ridiculous. This is actually a super reverse albino okatee corn snake. So basically it's an albino okatee corn snake, but in this extreme version that has tons of white in it. I mean, these thing are incredible. It's probably the best ones I've ever seen. I actually got these from my friends out at the Snake Keeper, the Sutherlands, and uh, I told it I couldn't be more happy. Cannot wait till these get up to size. Again, we can start breeding these into all kinds of different stuff. It's going to be amazing. These things are rippers. And hopefully this little California king snake will treat me a little bit better. Okay, it's not biting me, but it is peeing on me. But this is a 50-50 black and white California king snake. And I just think, look at the contrast on that animal. The black and white, that doesn't get much better better than that. And then the 50-50 part is what's really amazing. In the wild, they would actually be predominantly black with just a little bit of white banding. And over generations of breeding the higher white ones, you get these 50-50s that look like this. And my goodness, they are absolutely incredible. I get so excited about this stuff. And I start thinking that here in two years, this thing is gonna be an adult and gonna produce some incredible babies. And back to corn snakes. And this has always been one of my favorite mutations. I say that way too much to be honest with you. And I guess it's just true. But look at this guy, he's ready to bite me. This is actually a hypo lavender corn snake. What are you doing, buddy? It's literally coming up like, if you get close enough, I'm gonna strike you in the face. What an absolute ripper that thing is. But it's just that pink and the lavender undertones, a little bit of yellow popping through. These things are incredible. And then the eyes have that kind of ruby red eyes unbelievably beautiful animal. Again, one of those snakes that you look at and go, that can't be real, right? That's gotta be Photoshop, but this is it. This is what they look like. I mean, they are so awesome. And then there's this cool scaleless corn snake right here. This is a hypo diffuse, which is blood red, and an oka tea, just all together making for some insane patterns, or in this case, really a lack of pattern. I mean, all of that smooth siding that comes from the diffuse corn, which is what the blood reds do, and then you've got the oka tea and the hypo going on. Oh my gosh, this thing just gets better with age. Again, a couple years from now, it's gonna be adult. I tell you what, the future is pretty awesome, isn't it? And although garter snakes can be a little bit hyper, you know, they move around a lot, this is where my love of snakes started when I was a kid catching garter snakes in the local woods. And this is actually a granite checkered garter snake that we're raising up. I love these guys. Such beautiful pattern and colors and contrast. It's really amazing. It's a recessive mutation that causes all of this graniting that looks absolutely wonderful. So next year, this guy will be up to size two and we'll produce some more little baby granites.
granite garters. You guys may remember when I actually got these animals here. These are actually tricolored hognose snakes. Now they're not related to the western hognose snake, but they do still have that little pug nose and they're so cute. So they're doing really well. And this is actually what they would call a jag. So it's got kind of an interesting kind of scrambled up pattern. So next year these guys will be up to size. Again, we're raising up a lot of really cool stuff. So as we're streamlining in some areas, we're definitely growing into other areas for sure. And speaking of baby clubers, just like all these beautiful ones I just saw, we have some babies that are hatching out today that are gonna be awesome. This clutch was actually a butter motley to a butter to Sarah. And the one thing we found out this year is that to Sarah seemed to be a lelic to both striped and motley corns. So we're producing motleys and all kinds of different stuff from the to Sarah's. So everything's gonna be butter because the female is a butter and the male is the butter to Sarah. And sure enough, we have a bunch of really cool butter to Sarah stuff here. One, two, these guys are little tiny ones. There's no doubt about it, but they still look good. And wow, look at all these little Tesseras. I mean, there's a whole swatch of them here. Of course, these are all amazing little butter Tesseras here. Wow, there's a bunch of them. We would really, really crush the odds on this clutch for sure. So that's pretty awesome. And again, for whatever reason, when you're bringing them into Motley or Stripe, you get more Stripes and more Motleys in the butters. Whereas this one, all was butter to Sarah's or butters, which there's only one, two, three butters, and the rest were butter to Sarah's. I tell you what, that's some pretty good odds. We actually bred an albino motley scaleless to a het albino here in hopes that maybe it was het for scaleless because it came from that same group. Unfortunately, we didn't produce any scaleless stuff, but we do have some albinos, some normals. Of course, these are the albinos and the little feisty monkey here. What are you doing, you little crazy monkey right there? And of course, these would all be triple hets, right? Because they're het for albino, they're het for motley, and they're het for scaleless and the albinos are just double head. They're albinos that are head for motley scaleless. So nevertheless, nothing too crazy with the clutch, but it's still cool to see babies no matter what and the genetics behind them is pretty awesome. Down here in the dungeon, we definitely have some really cool ball pike that's we're raising up for the future as well. Remember that mystery clutch that hatched out some crazy stuff? This is one of them that I absolutely love. Again, it's definitely lemon blast, red stripe, yellow belly, something else going on and it's absolutely incredible. It keeps getting better with age. And then look at this one from the same exact clutch. I mean, it's crazy. I don't understand what is even influencing the pattern on this, or in this case, lack of pattern. And then we have those gray ones that came from the same clutch too. So <laughs> there's a lot of mystery to unravel in this clutch, but it's gonna be so cool when we get these ones up to size, we can then breed them to even normal ball pythons just to start unraveling what genes are actually in them. And that's the way you kind of figure it out, right? It's going back to the basic and breeding to wild type, and then every mutation will start to show. And then we can start figuring out what that hidden gene is because there's at least one gene in here that I'm not sure what it is that's causing all of this craziness. Then of course, you know I'm raising up a bunch of lorry stuff, including the super lorry leopards. We had a trio of those produced this year. They're getting big, they're growing like crazy. They look absolutely amazing. And we hung on to a bunch of other lorry stuff. It's a project that I am super, super excited about. I know I've had them for so many years. It's crazy and I feel terrible that it's taken me all these years to really understand the potential of this project, but I am all in on it. So we're raising up a bunch of them and they are certainly not disappointing. You guys may remember when we produced this little monkey right here. This is actually a banana Enchi Mojave clown ball python. Oh my gosh, as it's gotten some size on it, it gets better and better. I mean, just take a look at that thing. It just is on fire. It literally looks like it's glowing. It's a boy and next year it'll be ready to breed and this thing is gonna father some ripper babies. And then there was that all black ball python, the Suma, the super mahogany that is het for pied. I mean, take a look at it. It's gotten a lot of size, probably doubled since the last time I showed it on the vlog as far as its size go. And it's so amazing, just jet black eyes, beautiful, woo! It's a little feisty monkey too, but that's all right. I still love you, buddy. And one day we'll be able to produce that panda look, right? Where you're gonna have white and the suma. Black and white ball python is gonna be absolutely incredible. And then take a look at this. This is actually a fire cine yellow belly cypress ball python. That thing is so crazy, so cool. And again, we're raising up a bunch more ball pythons. I just wanted to give you the overview. Again, continue to push forward, continue to try to take it to the next level. Uh, I love it. I'm having a blast with this. And as a matter of fact, speaking of little baby ball pythons, we have a clutch that's hatched out today that's pretty awesome. Let's go check that one out. Poor little baby ball python. This was actually that yellow belly bred to the pastel ivory clutch. And uh, just really good odds on this one. We had four eggs, had three pastel ivories. These are definitely all pastel ivories because you can see how light their head pattern is. The ivories without the pastel will have much 
darker gray heads and stuff like that. So three pastel ivories, one yellow belly from a clutch. I mean, that's pretty good odds. White snakes are white snakes. And really the ivories was the first white snake that was ever really brought in. So uh, the black eyed Lucy's and the blue eyed Lucy's actually came a year or two after. So these were the very first white snakes in the reptile trade when it comes to ball python. So it's still awesome to produce them all these years later. Holy moly. This was that double head albino clown bred to an albino clown clutch that just yielded an insane amount of awesome animals. We had literally 10 eggs, nine of which were clowns. So we have a bunch of just beautiful clowns. These are all head for albino right here. And it's just absolutely amazing. And I've told this story before, but uh, Vita Precocia International or VPI down in Texas actually produced the first clowns. We were the second people to produce clowns, but they said that they thought that the patterns on their face look like clown makeup. And that's the, why the name Clown Ball Python. The double recessive is the albino clown like this one and this one here. So we ended up having two albino clowns, a whole bunch of clowns have for albino, and one albino. That was a dream clutch when we cut it. It was amazing. As a matter of fact, if you guys didn't see when we cut this, I'll put a card right here to that one. You guys want to definitely check that out. Back up in the Kluber room to some of the yearlings that are about ready to actually breed. This, of course, is an ultra mel scaleless corn snake. Oh my gosh. Look at the purples and browns that are coming through that animal. My goodness. And again, this is a little male, so he should be big enough to breed and go into brumation here. Most of the animals up here in this rack are going to breed in 2021. So, oh my gosh, we're going to have some beautiful new snakes up to size to produce babies. And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think there's much more beautiful than this animal right here. This is a female palmetto corn snake. And I'm not sure what we're going to breed her to yet this coming up year. That's going to be a big decision. We do have some other palmettos coming up that they won't be ready to breed this year. They'll be ready to breed next year. So we have to take this little girl and breed her into something super special. Not sure what it's going to be, but my goodness, isn't she gorgeous? This is a really good example of a granite Mex Mex or a Mexicana Mexicana San Luis Potosi king snake. And typically they have almost like saddles on them. And you can see the graniting looking right here, which is a polygenic trait absolutely wonderful snake and this is one of the better ones that we produced a couple years ago so we're raising her up and again she's just on the cusp i think with a little bit more food she's going to be able to breed for us next year some of the scaleless texas rats that we have coming up for next year are legitimately unreal i mean they absolutely don't even look like real snakes i mean look at the orange on that animal oh my goodness gracious we have orange ones we have red ones we have yellow ones we have so many amazing ones next year is going to be our best scaleless texas rats year ever i mean i cannot wait to see the babies we produce my goodness this thing is ridiculous <laughs> doggy i love coral snow corn snakes those pink corn snakes there's just something about it always reminds me of easter you know what i mean again i keep saying you don't expect snakes to be purple you don't expect snakes to be pink but yet this thing is pink and it gets pinker every year every time we breed these guys together they get better and better each generation so this is a brand new generation of pink coral snows that we have up and they're the best generation we've ever had so these babies are going to be out of this world it's been a while since we produced licorice black rat snakes and finally we have a pair that are up to size to breed this year just a really cool animal again they have that white but then they have that crazy color whoa what are you doing buddy oh my goodness this thing is fired up too it wants to bite me in the face what are you doing stop looking at me that way but these are really cool it's a recessive mutation they were found out in maryland years ago probably 20 years ago and bred and i loved them ever since we used to have a big group of them then we stopped breeding them and finally we have another pair up to size they're pretty cool and i can't wait to produce them again this year much like that pink snow corn snake this is the same bloodline but this is a coral ghost corn snake so instead of being a snow it's a ghost corn snake but it still has all of that pink and cool color in it basically all you're doing is adding the aneurysmic corn into this as well as hypo and then the pink you're polygenically breeding for the pink color so you know as you can see guys there is a lot of cool snakes that we're raising up i mean it's going to be a really really fun year here this next year again phb's future is looking pretty darn bright and then there's some ball pythons that actually should be up to size to breed this year that we produced last year that will be new on the scene of course this is a banana super chocolate ball python what an amazing snake i mean you guys know that i'm doing all kinds of stuff with that dark morph along with the banana stuff so this one's going to have a lot of plans this year to produce even darker animals so maybe we'll take it into mahogany maybe black pastel i mean who knows what we're going to do but i know one thing it's going to be busy this year 
And speaking of busy, this is another one that's gonna be busy. This is actually a pastel, it's a vanilla, it's a walnut python, and it's a bamboo ball python. I mean, wow, that thing is so ridiculous. Love this thing. And again, these guys are up to size to breed, so they're gonna be getting in with females here in just about a month, month and a half. It's really hard to pick up the beauty of this animal on camera, but this is actually a banana cine enchi pinstripe. And just the orange that kind of is popping through this animal is just ridiculous. When it was a baby, it was literally glowing. And when it was three, 400 grams, it was even better. It started to dull out a little bit now, but it's gonna produce some wicked babies. Again, probably take it back into Enchi, maybe into Orange Dream, Mojave, who knows? I know this one's gonna produce some really beautiful babies and I'm excited about it. And speaking about Orange Dream, this is actually a Stinger Bee Orange Dream Fire. So it's basically a pastel, it's a spider, it's a fire, and it's an Orange Dream. And it's gonna be absolutely incredible. And if its little head will come out, look at the pattern or lack of pattern on that head. Ooh, doggy. And of course, this one's in shed, so you can imagine when it sheds out how absolutely gorgeous it is. Then there's this project here that we're just calling a new gene animal. I promise one day I will come up with a better name than a new gene. But just that orange look to it is crazy. And finally, we have some of these up to size so we can prove them out as well as breed them into other mutations. So I'm pretty excited how this is going to turn out this year because this is the first time we're going to be able to actually breed one of the full new gene animals and find out what the heck is going on. I love this combination here. This is actually a banana, leopard, and she ball python. And again, in shed. So when it's out of shed, it is ridiculous. I mean, it's ridiculous when it's in shed, but when it's out of shed, it's absolutely incredible. Everyone's always excited about clown ball pythons. There's no doubt about it. And we've had some pretty cool clowns this year. There's no doubt. And we're gonna hang on to a bunch of them too. But this is actually a lesser leopard clown ball python that I absolutely love to death. And you know, I was just uh, thinking that this would be a good vlog to do because I was watching the 1500 vlog looking back on kind of old school vlogging and thought, why not bring you guys just a snake filled vlog with a bunch of kind of old school feel? Let me know in the comments if you like this feel uh, or if you miss the kind of more cinematic stuff. We'll probably mix it up a little bit. But today I thought I would just show you guys a bunch of cool snakes, show you that the future of BHB is still awesome, even if we will be streamlining a little bit. It's not like I'm getting out of it and it's not like I have lost my passion for it because I'm as passionate now as I've ever been. If you enjoy this video, there's actually a playlist right over on this side you can actually check up. Right in this corner here, you can subscribe to my podcast channel. On this side, you can actually subscribe to this vlog channel. Please turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.